Folks, welcome to a special Sunday event, Murder Hobo Inc. Back. Uh, we're picking up right where we left off last week, except we're minus two players for the time being. We're hoping that they pop in. Uh, folks, these guys are going through uh, Margot, the, the continent of Margot, and uh, they have got a lot of crap lined up after doing a lot of crap last week. But first, follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to buy our crap like this shirt, uh, the link is down there, tinyurl.com slash RPG swag. Uh, if not, no big deal. Uh, let's get right to introducing the players, uh, and then we'll go ahead and fill you in on what happened last time. Uh, Frank the Druid, let's start with you. Who are you, and who are you playing? I'm Frank Sr., and I'm playing uh, Leaf the Druid, <laughs> stumbling along. Nice. Uh, AJ, you're up next. Yeah, hey, everyone. I'm AJ, and I'm playing Felix the Rogue. And you're ready, right? You got your gambling dice? You got oh, your I got my gambling dice. dice. Uh, I uh, believe you got those gambling, those special gambling dice last episode. And I am very excited about it. I think you'll be disappointed. Uh, I believe it's Nick, is it not? It is. It, Nick, who are you and who are you playing? I am Nick, and I am Haggis Crapstain. Very nice. You did not get married last week, correct? Yes, I am a breaker of hearts. And eater of hearts, I believe. Eater, eater of hearts. And uh, everybody's favorite confusing halfling, uh, Copious V. Bitters. Uh, who are you and who are you playing, even though I just friggin' spoil, spoiler alerted. It's uh, Copious Vol Bitters the uh, Third, Brewer Extraordinaire and Gnome. Uh, recently traveled from the forest uh, to to ply his trade. Uh, he may have a little touch of witchery uh, in his blood. Uh, folks, if you missed last episode, shame on you, but it is on our YouTube archive, so you can catch it at any time. Uh, these guys had previously, 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 a while back, uh, gone through Cragwitch and solved the Minion of Habu cultist problem. Uh, with a little bit of a price on their heads, they decided to continue their escapades outside of the big city and left to find fame and fortune along the road. What they ended up finding was a caravan master, his retinue, a group of cultists that tried to kill them, and finally a roadhouse run by a guy named Patrick. Uh, as we stated earlier, Felix has come across a pair of special strange dice, and Haggis has come across a set of cards that are marked. He also missed the opportunity to get married to the uh, caravan master's uh, armed guard uh, extraordinaire. Uh, and then they all had the presence of mind to chase uh, an individual who attempted to rip off Felix uh, into a field where they met an animated scarecrow and an angry wife. Upon returning to the roadhouse, uh, they made arrangements to spend the night on the hard floor. The proprietor, Patrick, uh, allowed this. And then he went back with his very gorgeous daughter to the residential section of the building. This caused Felix and Haggis to tete a tete uh, to vie for the attractions of the attractive woman. Uh, meanwhile, back inside the roadhouse, trouble ensued when a large nightly cleric uh, arrived, uh, paid off Felix, thinking that he was the proprietor's associate uh, and the group has been drinking the stores when Felix arrived to vie for the attentions of the attractive young woman uh, Haggis threw him under the bus along with everybody else and told Patrick hey they're stealing your shit uh, which is a murder hobo favorite uh, persuasion rolls were rolled uh, unfortunately for Felix uh, Patrick wasn't feeling the vibe Haggis was uh, Patrick has now grabbed a pole arm and is headed back into the tavern portion where he will meet uh, Leeds, uh, Man to or Manfang, 
Robert and Copious. Let's pick up where we left off. Felix, uh, Patrick es exits the door, barely missing your nose with the glaive and slams the door behind him, looks at Haggis and says, lead on, I want to deal with these thieves you have told me about. Haggis, we'll start with you. What do you want to do? I, I say, um, yeah, yeah, they're over there. Go, go get them. I'll, I'll, I'll wait here and make sure that Felix uh, thief doesn't take anything of yours. He brushly uh, he brushes by you and heads off towards the front entrance, uh, leaving you and Felix standing there at the door. Felix, we'll switch over to you. What do you want to do? I'm going to knock as seductively as I can on the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, knock seductively as possible on the door. Uh, you know what? Why not? Uh, give me a roll for performance. I got a three. With the hilt of a dagger, you began to beat unmercifully on the door like you are some kind of orc horde, uh, causing screams to echo from inside. You need to fine tune that seduction skill. Uh, Haggis, you witnessed this. Do you want to laugh at him or do something else? Uh, yeah, I knock. Are you going to knock seductively as well? Let's try it. Sure, go ahead. Give me a performance check. Is a two again? So now you two are rhythmically beating on the door with the butts of your weapons. I'm I'm sure that will make the medieval panties drop immediately. Uh, Leaf and Copious, the door to the roadhouse bursts open and a man wielding a pole arm yells out, what the hell's going on in here? You immediately recognize him as Patrick, the owner of the establishment. Which one of you wants to speak? <laughs> As you, as he catches you in mid drink, <laughs> uh, I'll I'll try something here. Okay, I can hardly wait. <laughs> <laughs> well, as, as you know, I I uh, am, am a skilled from a skilled family of gnomish brewers and distillers. Correct. Uh, so I'm I'm going to explain to him in my most convincing way possible that I was going through his supply and identifying uh, the quality of his drink. And I have a suggestion of a, perhaps a new, a new uh, brewery that he could attempt to uh, establish contact with uh, and that he's got some fine, uh, fine uh, drafts here, but I, I have some suggestions for him. I will take persuasion. Wouldn't we all take persuasion? Uh, you can't see. do much worse than Felix and Haggis, I don't think. No, not in 2022. I think I'm in pretty good shape. Go on. I said, well, there's, there's a, uh, if you, if you head uh, north of, uh, uh, of the, the city, uh, there's a small forest glen, and inside there, there is the Vol Bitters Brewery. Uh, it's a very long established, been around for hundreds of years, brewing only the finest beers and uh, distilled liquors available uh, from really some esoteric tastes. Uh, very unique. I could probably set you up with our family uh, to begin a transaction on a regular basis for a delivery run. What would that entail cost-wise? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you what. I will, I will undercut whatever you're currently paying per barrel just to get you started with our, with our company. Oh, it's a pyramid scheme. Got it. <laughs> a, a pyramid brewery scheme. Uh, okay. Uh, Leaf, would you like to interject or calmly continue to sip on your beverage of choice? I'm going to sip on the beverage of choice and just uh, let Mr. Uh, Wonderful over there talk. That works. Uh, Robert Manfang? Still not here. Okay, uh, Copious, uh, how much are you going to undercut him? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, for the, for the first month of supply run, we'll undercut 10% under what you're currently paying. D12 against me. That's an 11. That's a 2. Uh, I'm going to need something a little bit better than that. We're a common roadhouse. We don't have a lot of uh, uh, 
connoisseurs uh, here, and it sounds like your uh, product is a bit on the uppity scale. So how about 20%? I'll tell you what, how about 15% uh, per month for the first three months, and I'll sweeten the deal with a, a, a bottle of our very special uh, uh, distilled only from the finest spring water in Vol Bitters country uh, of, our, of our best whiskey. So it's up water from the pasture, <laughs> upstream from the pasture. Well, I didn't say that. We are gnomes. <laughs> uh do you have it do you have the whiskey on you i have a sample and i'll pull out uh, my little flask i keep inside my my doublet and i will pull a cup out give it a spit shine and pour a little bit of the whiskey into it for him to sample he enjoys it you have a deal ah uh, thank you very much I appreciate uh, the offer. In the morning, he will want uh, a contact point, easiest way to message, and if you do Amazon delivery. Uh, if by Amazon you mean big rivers with sailing ships going down it, yes. That works. A lot of uh, the trade in Margu is handled through river traffic. So he will agree to that. He'll look around. He will forego the casual beverage drinking that everybody's doing and ask if Sir Lego is present. That would be the nightly cleric. Is, is that the gentleman we helped establish into the room behind the wall here? It is indeed. He is in there, yes. Is he asleep? Uh, I did not disturb the gentleman. Uh, Nor did I. Felix D12 against me. Four. Three. Uh, I'll ask him. Uh, he returns back around to find Felix and Haggis. <laughs> <laughs> and clears his throat loudly. <clears throat> what in the hell are you doing? I saw something on the ground. I believe I picked it up. It belongs to your daughter. It's a, a small purse with uh, three gold coins in it. I was looking to return it to her. Persuasion. <laughs> Eight. That is not my daughter's purse. Oh, uh, <laughs> perhaps I was mistaken. I saw it, I picked it up and it was a little dimly lit. Um, I guess, can you hear? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, good. Uh, huh. I don't know about that. Uh, perhaps we should let your daughter inspect the purse. She might be the one to uh, be the determiner or be able to determine it. Hagas, uh, do you want to add anything to this, what I'm sure is a catastrophe in the making? Um, I look, uh, I, I yell like uh, loud birds behind him or like, a, I don't know, like a wolf's behind him or something. I yell that so he turns around. Uh, persuasion. 17. He turns and looks. Okay. Um, and, and then I take out my coin purse and put 17 <laughs> gold pieces in it. <laughs> this is a rich young lady we're dealing with here. <laughs> he turns I, back around and he goes, I see no wolf. That, because I scared it off. I, I said to him, I say to him, I scared it off. Because I am manly, unlike my Felix. You know? <laughs> Persuade me. What does the three do? Just to... You get laughed at. <laughs> <laughs> you two, if you want to treat my personal residence as some kind of bar, you can leave right now and you don't even have to go back inside the roadhouse. We do not take kindly to your kind of disruptors. Oh, we no, sir. My domicile. <laughs> well, we meant nothing of the sort. We did not mean to, uh, to impose. We were simply trying to 
return a lost coin purse to a young lady. I hope that she does not come looking for it in the morning. <laughs> Fair enough. Are you guys going to head back inside uh, with the others? Yes. And on my way back, I'm going <coughs> to peer around to see if there ha perhaps is a back door or a window left ajar in the residence. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, D12 against me. There won't be a back door, but I'll give you a window if you beat me. Three. Eight. <laughs> uh, there is a window, but it's barred shut. Okay, back in the pub I go, in the tavern. Copious, Leaf, uh, Manfang, and Robert. Uh, the door opens up, and Haggis and Felix return, arguing each one of them has a coin purse in their hand. Uh, it coincides with about the same timing that Patrick has uh, come and gone. Uh, the two clearly have attempted to use their seduction skills. Skills. <laughs> uh, and have not been fruitful. Uh, Manfang, Robert, Leaf, you all notice that Copious V. Bitters III has successfully created a kind of business union with Patrick. Felix and Haggis, you do not know this. Um, it is starting to get late at night. Would you guys like to bed down on the hard floor? Or do no, you bed down? Bed down. Yeah, floor? I do. Yep. Yep. Morning dawns anew. Uh, you're feeling a little bit of kink in your backs. It wasn't very comfortable. Uh, and you notice that the attractive young daughter is scrubbing down the bar, smiling at Felix the Rogue. <laughs> That's a two. Yeah, I knew she was. <laughs> She's smiling or laughing? Uh, she is smiling. Um, I, she's stupid. What can we say? <laughs> uh, Patrick is also present, as is his uh, wife, who uh, clearly the daughter gets the looks from the wife and not Patrick. Uh, also, the secret door opens and Sir Lego, the knightly cleric, exits. Uh, it is time for my morning vespers after my morning constitutional. I will be back. Uh, he walks out, but everybody give me perception check. Natural 20. What'd you roll, Frankie? Uh, let me check. 18? 19. Plus what? I'm not gonna look at Two? One? 20. He rolled a 20. I rolled a natural one. Leaf. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> 24. Everybody but Robert <laughs> clearly notices that Robert must still be asleep. So Robert's still asleep. Everybody else notices that as Sir Lego leaves, he shuts the secret door but it does not latch. Uh, Patrick, his lovely daughter, and his lovely wife are all busy getting ready for the morning. I would like to stealthily slide in the small room. Kel surprise. I, I barge into the room. I just go straight for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, copious and Haggis initiative. We'll see if stealth beats brashness. 16. Uh, Copious, give me a DC 12 versus dexterity to avoid being run over by Haggis Crapstain as he beelines it for the door as Felix gives the barmaid a wink, which is returned with a sly. <laughs> you said DC 12? DC 12 dex. A halfling just stepped on a gnome. <laughs> As you e e e e e Haggis Crapstein knocks you over and goes into the secret room. Uh Haggis, you notice that there's a very uh while not 
kingly bed. It's certainly a very plush bed. There's a small bureau and a small bookcase nearby. It has an oil lantern and it is very homey. Uh, the walls are painted with, uh, we'll say, uh, juvenile murals. Uh, I would say crayons if they had them in Margot. Uh, but it's a, it, it's a nice room for uh, a roadhouse. Um, if I stand up before he comes out, I'm shutting the door on him and I'm <laughs> wedging something under it. Uh, that's fair. <laughs> I think Haggis is going to look around, I assume. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Haggis, give me a perception check. 17. Haggis puts his hands on his hips, looks around and goes, this is a nice place. The door slams shut behind him. <laughs> uh, Robert, uh, you now wake up and you too must uh, perform a daily constitutional. Would you like to go outside uh, where Sir Lego went? Not that you noticed. That's fine. I'll go out. <laughs> it's a two-seater. Uh, as you sit down, uh, you can hear somebody. Uh, just on the other side of the partition, uh, also relieving himself from the morning aggravation. Would you like to speak to him or just take care of business? Excuse me, Father. I am. Ah, oh, send. My son, not this is sin. not a constant, or this is not a confessional. This is a constitutional. Oh, we should pray for what just happened down below. Uh, he notices and points out that you must be part green dragon. Funny enough, I ate some dragon eggs last night. <clears throat> they do not agree with me. Where are you and your associates headed? I can't remember the full storyline. Uh, you know. <laughs> the disappearing Thorps in... Uh... The assassination attempt bodyguard. No, we didn't want to do the bodyguard. No, we're going to villages that are disappearing. Yeah, Metcalf yeah. is where you're yes. headed. Yes. We're heading to Metcalf. <clears throat> well, I've not been there. Those people are little people. Not not a big fan of the little people. The little people are the backbone of the world, sir. The little people have good hearts, but they worship the wrong gods. Damn them. They should worship the gods of rock and get that. Yeah. Yes, Father. Uh Robert, what are you? Are you a halfling too? I am a half orc. That's right. A half orc bard. Still out looking for my van. Nice. Uh, Copious, go ahead and give me a, I don't know, give me a survival check because I think Haggis is going to kick your ass if he gets out. Hmm. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Haggis, what do you want to do? The door is slammed shut behind you. I don't know. Is there like a window? Nope. This is an enclosed area. Um, I, I, the bookshelves, like, you know, like how it's like a bookshelf, like has a, you know, like a secret. I pull all the books, books off the bookshelf. Okay. You know? There are, there are very many. There are a few scrolls. Uh, most of them are religious in nature. Some of them are heretical. Some of them, uh, follow the code of, the perceived religion. Copious, uh, his action is going to allow you to go ahead and hammer in uh, a pitten or a wedge of wood to seal him in. Uh, Felix, uh, you get the uh, head nod to go outside. Go outside? Oh, my. All right. From I assume this is from the daughter, not yes. from someone in my party. Correct. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to go slip outside and meet her, and uh, I'm going to, as I'm walking, I, is she walking in front of me, behind me, or is she still there? Waiting? As you head to the door, you hear, Father, I must go fetch some more water. Perfect. So I'm going to wait for her outside, and as she comes outside, I'm going to try to get close to her and use sleight of hand to uh, something off of her person 
and the sexual harassment begins early. Uh, Man Fang, what do you want to do? You're the only one we haven't heard from tonight. Uh, you notice, uh, give me a perception check first. Let's see if you notice Copious uh, putting the nail in the coffin. Plus two. Eight. Uh, you don't notice much of anything. So what would you like to do? Mm, I think I'm just going to go outside and take a pee. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> gonna pee on the horse tires. Yeah, that, that works well. Hoggis, give me an investigation check. How does a seven do? Uh, you don't find much. You find your fingers. Leaf, what would you like to do? Uh, first off, give me a perception check to see if you notice copious feed bitters sealing the door. 19. Oh, yeah. You watch it. You can pretty much assume what's going on here. I'm going to go up to Copious and lean down and speak to him in a whisper. Okay. What do you want to tell him? Uh, Copious, <laughs> we need to get out of here before the cleric's non-payment of his rent comes up. That's Felix's recall. problem. <laughs> <laughs> Copious, uh, he has given you sound advice. What would you like to do? I'm going to use my fey presence and try to intimidate him back. To back off. So I think that's a, a charm spell. So he has to roll DC 13. DC 13 it is, Leaf. <laughs> 12. Close, uh, you back off cautiously, noting that Copious has uh, an axe to grind, so to speak. Robert, uh, you are done with your constitutional. You notice that the friar, the cleric, the knight, whatever you want to call him, Sir Lego, uh, he, he's got a few more minutes in him, I think. Wasn't the task we chose to take, wasn't it the one that the uh, cleric mentioned to us? Uh, yes. So I'm just uh, not, I'll just knock on his door and say, would you call the cleric a father? You can call him father. You can call him Sir Lego. Hey, Sir Lego. We heard your story last night about the troubles and what was it called again? Metcalf. Metcalf. So we figured <laughs> we would head that way for that adventure. When are you parting for that? Oh, I am not headed that way. I have come from that way. Where are you heading? Uh, I am headed to Arkpool. Uh, what's there? It's the big city. Uh, I am uh, there to uh, attend a religious council. Ah, one of those. Uh, as you discuss this with the occupied individual, <laughs> Noodle, a.k.a. Manfang, walks past you and goes into the stall that you just uh, vacated. Uh, Noodle in there for five minutes, dude. Noodle, why don't you give me a constitution check? <laughs> Nine. Yeah. It is ghastly in there. Uh, <laughs> you, you can choose to just go around the back or um, take a big deep breath and go inside anyway. I'm going to go around the back just to be safe. <clears throat> There you go. Uh, from your vantage point, you can see Felix and the young, attractive barmaid sharing quiet whispers among each other. Uh, she giggles coquettishly uh, as he attempts a new seduction skill, and I'll take that role right now, Felix. <laughs> 17. You're a charmer. Uh, Haggis, uh, you managed to knock off every single book and parchment off of the bookcase, uh, creating quite a mess, but you find nothing of value. You said there were like drawers, um, right? Yeah, we could put drawers in them, I don't care. All right, uh, yeah, I'll just look around, you know. Give me another investigation check, please. <clears throat> and uh, you find a priestly small velvet bag. One might say it's a coin purse, but it holds no coins. Inside it holds a single glass vial 
with a wax stopper on it. The fluid is green. Drink it, see what happens. Yeah, that was my idea. Yeah. I'm no, I'm gonna pocket it and just I don't know, <laughs> scream for help. Or <laughs> Uh, as you scream for help, Copious, I assume you will want to laugh, or would you like to let him out now? Uh, do I see the, the priestly sort coming back towards the, the roadhouse? Uh, Manfang, Robert, and Sir Lego, as well as Felix, are MIA at this point in time. It's you, Leaf, Pat, his wife, uh, and strangely, uh, the young barmaid is missing as well. So I'm going to, uh, does, does Pat recognize screaming coming from the small room yet? Uh, uh, let's see. He is quite busy <laughs> with a four. So no, he is screeching a large keg across the floor, which seems to coincide with help me, help me. Okay. So I'm going to do this <laughs> in, in, uh, in order here. First off, I'm going to go up to Pat and I'm going to say, Pat, where's your daughter? That's <laughs> one. <laughs> Two, I'm going to wait until I see the priest about to enter the the bar, and then I'm going to pull whatever I've shoved into the door stop back out so the door can open up. Okay. So those are your two things, right? Those are my two things, yes. <clears throat> Pat, starting to sweat profusely already, uh, uh, even though it's early morning, goes, uh, my daughter, uh, she went out to fetch some water. Why do you ask? Oh, I, I just, I can't find Felix. He's not here. And I thought maybe he, she would know where he was. Wow. You need to check the axles on the ox card, Felix. <laughs> and then as he, as Pat's very distracted by the thoughts now running through his head, I'm going to bring up the point that the first month's cost for delivery, a portion of that has to be paid to secure the deal before I leave. Wow, screwing over the screwing over the man. Uh, Leaf, you notice this uh, discussion going on. What would you like to do? I'm gonna talk to the Patrick's wife and uh, order some grub for breakfast. Sure, that'll work. Uh, she is an accomplished cook and promises you that it will be the best repast that you have had in a long time. Or to Felix, Felix, uh, you are just charming almost the dress off this young lady uh, when a disturbance is heard as some people come up the road and are yelling at Manfang to put that thing away. You're out in public. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, I'm going to regain our, our composure here and pretend like I'm asking for directions to uh, Medcalf. Uh, yes, yes, just... You said it's right up over the hill. Just step that way to the left. You turn at the big tree, correct, young lady? Uh, yes. <laughs> she has no idea where Metcalf is. Uh, Haggis, uh, you're pushing against the door. You're yelling. Nobody's answering. Give me a strength check. Uh, four. Yeah, good luck. Uh, <laughs> Robert, uh, the door opens up and a wafting of stale aroma, I'll say, uh, exits as Sir Lego is shuffling his vestments in his nightly tabard around and goes, well, if you're headed to Metcalf, uh, please say hi to Mary Wind. Uh, she is one of the council members. Uh, she and I have a very good relationship. She is a fine lady. Any blessings you could put upon me there, Lord, for this uh, journey and adventure? Take a knee. Uh-oh, I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the power vested in me. Uh, hey, Ram. Hey, Rama Ram. Uh, uh, go uh, with great... Let's step over to one side here, my son. <laughs> I got the gist. Thank you, Father. I appreciate it. Man Fang, you come up around the corner, uh, still tucking it in. You've got farmers yelling at you. Put that thing away, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Felix, you notice that your quarry has slipped in behind you, and she's back in the building 
just as Patrick opens up the door, nearly striking one of the farmers in the face. Uh, he sees you, he sees her. Uh, she does have a full pitcher of water that she did not need, uh, so he scowls at you. Uh, as the rest of the group uh, leaf, you get a heaping plate of food for a very low cost. That's You can roll at advantage constitution, but it's going to be very good. Copious, give me a perception check at the door to see if you see everybody coming back in. <clears throat> 21. Leaf. Nineteen. Food's delicious. I, it's the best breakfast you've had in a long time. <sighs> Copious, there seems to be a traffic jam at the front door, uh, just over Patrick's uh, shoulder. You see Felix. Uh, you see his daughter slip back in. You see uh, Robert uh, approaching along with Sir Lego. Uh, part two of your plan, uh, Haggis, give me a D12 roll. Copious, give me a D12 roll. I assume, Haggis, you're going to try and bust through the door again. Nice. 11. Oh, uh, Copious, just as you reach the door, uh, you lean down to move that wedge and you hear footsteps stomping up towards it. He's going to throw his entire weight against it. Haggis, if you roll high enough on your strength check, you might whack Copious in the face. <laughs> 18. Copious, beat an 18 on your dexterity modifier roll. Whacked in the face. Uh, you skitter across the floor. Haggis steps out. Haggis, D12 against me, a.k.a. Sir Lego. Or a a. Uh, you burst through the door. Uh, unfortunately, it is still open just as Sir Lego walks in and his eyes are readjusting, still trying to impart the blessing on Robert. Uh, behind him, Felix, uh, Man Fang, uh, and two farmers will walk in. The two farmers are loudly complaining to Patrick that, hey, this guy over here was uh, dangling out his uh shovel uh in public is exposing his tail exactly so copious you suffer no damage you just get knocked back on your butt Haggis, uh you come crashing through the door but the door is open sir lego let's see if he notices does not with a six uh he goes right up to the bar looks at leaf and asks is it as good as you've ever had? It is very, very good. I highly recommend. Patrick's wife makes the best gruel this side of Arkpool. Uh, my dear, I will also take some. Uh, he sits down next to Leaf at the bar. Copious, you pick yourself up, dust yourself off. Haggis, you look around. Felix, uh, you get another wink from the uh, young lady. Uh, Robert, you cannot, or you can, you have now freed yourself from the holy man. And Noodle, uh, you're just tired of listening to the farmer's yap. So uh, breakfast is served. Leaf is already eating. Uh, Felix, Copious, you two are well aware that there was a monetary transaction that may or may not turn out poorly. What would everybody like to do, starting with Copious? Well, uh, I'm going to see if I can procure some writing and parchment, uh, writing utensils and some parchment to scratch out the contract we negotiate and get that signed and sealed. Uh, and looking into the open door, you see some parchment on the floor. I'm going to ask uh, Brother Lego, uh, do you happen to have any writing materials that I could use to work out the, to finalize the contract I have with uh, Patrick here? He's shoveling the food in as much as he can. <clears throat> and gives you the thumb. 
Hoy. Okay. Not very observant, our brother, is he? No, he is not. He has he is statistically hampered in several avenues. <laughs> Uh, before I go get the parchment, I think I'm going to go ahead and step outside uh, and make sure all my materials are gathered up and in whatever haversack I have on me, prepared to hit the road. Uh, Leaf, uh, you have consumed your plate of grub and it has been delicious. What would you like to do? I'm also going to gather my goods and head outside. I'm ready to go. Uh, Felix, you're up. Uh, you're getting another wink. I'm going to gather my goods and stop by and say my goodbyes and let her know that I'll be back this way in about a fortnight, and I will definitely keep her on my mind until then. D12 against me to see if Patrick notices. Five. Three. He does not notice, and she blushes profusely as the corpuscles in her cheeks just are inflamed. Haggis, uh, you had your chance with the caravan merchant. Doesn't look like you're going to have a chance with Patrick's daughter unless you want to give it one final fling as Felix grabs his shit and walks out. No, no. I'll, I'll make my way out. I'll gather my stuff and make my way out. I wouldn't touch it after that. Oh, oh wait, hey, you, I can't, you say I can't do it? I was a soldier. I wouldn't touch it after that either. Scare me, bro. Nobody's saying you can't do it. We're just warning I wouldn't do it. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Uh, Robert Noodle, uh, all of your friends. Right here. Get out of the bar. Up. <laughs> uh, Noodle and Robert, what do you want to do? Pack in my bags, grab some gruel, and I'll leave an extra silver piece for the bowl. I'm walking out. Um, she appreciates that. Noodle, man fang. Collecting my stuff and leaving. Uh, the farmers give you a glare and again, tip down, checking to make sure nothing's hanging out. Uh, everybody is now outside. Uh, Felix may or may not have the right directions to Metcalf. You aren't really sure. Uh, you are at the crossroads that will take you in multiple directions. Uh, do you want to head to Metcalf? Everybody heads, heads off, and it is going to take you. Let me do a quick check on the map. Holy shit. <laughs> uh, it is going to take you a total of five days to get there. And on day three, uh, day one and two, you pass by several groups of people. They, mm, mm, hey, old fellow, fellow traveler. Uh, but none of them seem to be very friendly. None of them seem to be very aggressive. On day three, uh, you notice a cacophony of music approaching you and several uh, gaily colored uh, clothing ears are approaching. Each of them are playing a different instrument. Uh, they look like... We're getting the band back together. The band is here, so <laughs> um, All right, well. they will stop by and uh, ask you who you are and see if you have ever heard of the um, crap. It's, uh, oh, it's the Von Trapp family singers. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, have you ever heard of the Von Trapps? We are they. I have. Is there a former nun among them? She's dead. Oh! <laughs> then, then they're not worth my time. Yeah, no, totally walking on now. Oh, yeah. Once I heard that, you know. You appear to be brave adventurers. Might we follow you around to tell, your, tell of your exploits? We don't need such people. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> I will take perception checks by everybody, please. If I have wonderful perception this time, 16, 17, 17, 15, Man Fang, 17. Uh, everybody but Felix notices that 
they are coming from where you're going. So it puzzles you as to why they would want to accompany you. Felix, however, is still thinking fondly of his near tryst with the young barmaid three days later. Apparently, Felix needs to watch The Sound of Music and get an eyeball on that older daughter. That's true. Liesel. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are telling him, hell no, you aren't coming with us? Yeah. I'm the, right. I'm the part of this group. I tell of its adventures. And we're going exactly where you're coming from. Why would we want you to go back with us? I, I'm all in favor of them joining us. Of course you are. I do not want them to join us. I've dealt with people like this before. <laughs> you are people like this. <laughs> I am people like that, yes. But we this this caravan's not big enough for the how many of them are there? I don't know. Ten of us? Yeah, there would be now. Oh, yes. We don't need them. Trust me. I say no. And Hoggis, you're the last vote. Yeah, I I I say no. Yeah. Everybody but Copious and Man Fang want them to hit the highway. Um, they appear to be crestfallen at the opportunity to hang out with seasoned adventurers. Uh, and they said, well, blessed day to all of you and attempt to shake everybody's hand. Kind of like a little league high five at the end of the game. Flippers! Flippers! Stay away! Anybody I, want to give them a high five? I'm going to tell them, ugh, no, I got the pox. You don't want to touch this. They immediately avoid copious V bitters. I'm the one that gave it to him. They immediately walk away from Robert. I don't, I don't shake hands. <laughs> I'll they give him the high five. One more time, Felix. I'll give him the high five, but I'm also going to... Mm, Look him in the eye while I'm doing it. Like, what do you know? Give me an intimidation check. Well, Haggis, what would you like to do? Wow. Oh. And copious. Uh, no, I'm I'm the original pox bearer. I'm, I'm going to take. Oh, a that's right. That's right. Uh, Felix, uh, the look in your eye causes some consternation. And they give you a wide berth as well. They continue down the road playing a very clever tune. Uh, something by a bard they heard of by the name of Prince. And they go down the road. Uh, two and a half days later, uh, you are traveling through the mountains, up and down the mountain passes. Fortunately, you have found signs to Metcalf. And uh, every couple of miles, you see Metcalf is quickly growing closer. Uh, the area is mountainous. It appeals to the dwarves and gnomes, which are uh, resplendent in this area, uh, known as Snowf. Uh, I will take Arcana checks from each of you, please. <clears throat> Nine. Fourteen. Eleven. Ten. Six. Uh, Twenty. One. Robert of Zeppelin is well aware that this area is A, a republic, and B, uh, the home to gnomes and dwarves, mostly mining. Uh, but the mountainous peaks here should have told you, the rest of you all of that, but Robert of Zeppelin will go ahead and give his oratory on these guys are miners and they are a republic. Uh, the gnomes and dwarves, while sometimes clashing, uh, have worked together to create a very profitable and peaceful uh, nation. Uh, as you reach Metcalf a short time later, it is evening and the walled city guards ask you to state your business. Not all at once, though. <laughs> we are here from word of uh, Sir, I can't remember, what, legit? Leg Lego. 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 Lego my ego? Yes, Lego of my ego. My Lego. He told us of a problem. 
We are here as adventurers to help solve said problem. So you saw the notice. Yeah, that's it. The council will be available in the morning if you would like to plead your case. Uh, I take it, it Mary is still on the council? Mary. I don't know. He didn't give me a last Marywind. name. Marywind. Marywind. Yes. Marijuana. 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 Yes. On the council. Marijuana. Mary, Mary Wind is on the council. That's what I said. Mary Wind. Yeah. Marijuana. Fair enough. Uh, we ask that while in the city of Metcalf, you do not pull your weapons. We will not take them unless you decide to use them. Uh, we are a peaceful community. Uh, we expect no fighting and we have specific laws that are written on the board behind me. Pretty much it's the 10 to 12, 14 commandments, uh, all fairly basic. Uh, you notice that no loitering is up on the board for some reason. Uh, I'm going to study the board and then I'm going to ask them, what, why is no loitering on the board? Uh, we do not like malcontents. If you're going to be here, you're going to be working hard because that is what we do. Uh, I, are these human guards? I should have asked. Yeah. Are they gnomes? They dwarves? are gnomes and dwarves Lord. working together. My brethren, my people. They I'm seem gonna, unimpressed. Yeah, of course they are. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to do my spiel about being a, a brewer inventor and the Volbitters brand and ask which direction is the brewer's guild uh inside the brewer's guild is on the second tier this is a tiered city uh it is on the second tier it is on your west which will be your right but he motions with his left okay. because he's facing perfect. you yep perfect <laughs> look felix it says thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife that was thy neighbor's daughter not wife that's the yeah, but the daughter's not here now. Touché. She was somebody's daughter. <laughs> uh, as you enter the city, uh, it seems to be rather quiet. However, it also seems rather clean. It's Canada. Pretty much. Uh, cobblestone streets. Uh, there is a guy lighting uh, oil-based torches, uh, street lamps, if you will, along the area. Uh, they will point out to you that the inn and tavern district is straight ahead. Remind you, keep your weapons holstered in their scabbards, uh, lest we come for you. Are there any questions for the guards? You are allowed entry into Metcalf. Uh, down the main drag is the inn and tavern area. You will notice, you know, rules needed that most of the accommodations are for those of the uh, shorter variety. However, there is uh, one or two spots that will hold human and above spots. Uh, the whole area seems to be rather wealthy, uh, for lack of a better term, well-to-do maybe. Uh, but this is a very nice place. Uh, as Robert has pointed out, it's similar to Canada. They may even have uh, health care for all here. You don't know. Are there any Tim Horton taverns here? Oh, perfect. Hey. 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 A little down. Hey. 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 Where'd they be about? Yeah. A boot. A boot. Uh, there is a tavern called the Saskatchewan. <laughs> You aren't sure what what that word means. I go in there and get some moose head. Uh, who are my big people here? Felix, just you, or Haggis, what are you? Yeah, I think I'm pretty tall. Half one. Uh, Leaf and... Four tall, six, five, or four. Oh, yeah, you're going to have some tight quarters here. Uh, who picked the Saskatchewan? I did. D12 against me. It's a nine. Ten. Uh, it is for big people. It is a full-size tavern. Uh, so this area seems to be filled with travelers and traveling merchants. I don't notice any gambling or fresh looking women laying around, do I? Copious, uh, you looked at the board. You noticed that there is no gambling here. 
Uh, fresh women, um, D12 against me. Eight. Five. Uh, there are a, a few women of questionable morals uh, hanging out. Okay. Felix, you have to pay. <laughs> but there's some questionable women that are over there. No gambling, though. Uh, I understand no gambling. I, I'm pretty sure that's against one of the 12 or 14 commandments of when we entered. I got it. But let's see what really takes place in this Saskatchewan. You pay one of them women, you'll be gambling. That's by snooze new. <laughs> uh, so would you like to go over and introduce yourself, Felix? Absolutely. <clears throat> <sighs> Every group's got the dirty whore. Felix is ours. One dwarf, two gnomes. Uh, the dwarf, surprisingly, uh, she trims her beard quite well. She has a charisma of 15. The two gnomes, 16 and 18. These ladies see your approach. Ooh, Bridget the Midget. And they are uh, eagerly anticipating your arrival as you stride confidently across the bar. I vomit a little in my mouth watching him, just saying up front. I know there's no gambling, guys, but we're going to lay a bet on what he catches. <laughs> Would you like to do that? <laughs> Are you talking to us or Felix? I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> Loser. Losers have to pay the night's stay. Uh, I am not gambling. I don't trust gnomes and dwarves to uphold these rules. Are you guys saying this out loud? <laughs> no. no. Whisper again. It's all whispered. Okay. Well, the, uh, the, the tavern itself is filled with a variety of races and cultures. Uh, some of them look at you, uh, think uh, most icily uh, the cantina. Most of them don't give you the time of day. You all watch Felix stride across in an effort to go ahead and charm the ladies, despite the fact that it's only been five days since he has promised his eternal love to Pat's daughter. Uh, Leaf, Haggis, what would you two like to do? I want to belly up and get a, get a brew, something to eat. Haggis? Um, there's like a bartender. Um, I go up to him and say if there's a, like any arcane or alchemy studies, alchemy studies, any shops of that nature. Uh, they are, but they're closed right now. I order a ale or something. Fair enough. Uh, Copius, Robert, and Manfang, you, while you discuss uh, Felix's over-under on achieving a friend, uh, Copius has said he's not going to gamble. Manfang and Robert, do you want to put, place the side bet or not? Five to one that he catches something from it. Ooh, five to one. That's pretty good odds, Noodle. I'm, yeah, I'm thinking of taking those odds. <laughs> I'm not healing anybody. Noodle, what do you want? He's giving you five to one odds. I'm not going to take those odds, I don't think. Fair enough. Felix, the trio slash bevy of attractive women, uh, smile shyly at you as you approach. How are you going to navigate these questionable waters as you stand head and shoulders above them? I'm going to be very gingerly when I walk up to them, and I'm going to use the thieves' cant which is the secret mix of dialect to try to ask them if there's a, if they have any knowledge of any gambling in the area. The dwarf responds in kind, what you're looking for. I am partial to dice, but I could also be interested in some cards. The gnomes 
listening to you guys do your mumbo jumbo strange uh discussion decide to walk away for greener pastures uh, and the dwarf points out that you are in the wrong location you need to go across the street i will thank her and uh be on my way across the street is the ottawa tavern For little people. <laughs> uh, are you going to enter it? Because the door comes to about right here on you. Uh, upon seeing that, I'm not. I'm not getting on my knees to go into this tavern. I'm going to turn back around and go into the Saskatchewan, and hook up with uh, the rest of the party and ask them what's going on, what they are doing. Oh no, we lost Frank. He disappeared. Magic. You, you said hook up. I, I hope. I hope you didn't. I, I'm I just heard hook up. Sure. I started looking for gnomes. I'm going to walk over to one of those two gnomes and gently see if my beer will balance on her head. <laughs> That's okay. I assume you'll edit this out. Early. Okay. <laughs> edit this out. I don't know, but uh, I want to know if Felix ever actually got the name of the farmer's daughter, Pat's daughter, from the last no, place. I, I did. It was Daphne. <laughs> oh, no way. Yes, it was Daphne. Did she she told you it Fred? to me while I was... Uh, Sorry about that, guys. I, uh, I was plugged in, but apparently not all the way, so I'm having a Felix moment. Uh, so Felix returns... <laughs> uh, Robert of Zeppelin, you uh, do not have any takers on your bet, so you have not lost any money. Leaf, Haggis, uh, the alcohol is fairly good here uh, at the Manit or at the Saskatchewan. Is it dwarven ale here, or is it some kind of? Oh, oh yeah, or... it's it's dwarven ale. It's it's mm. kind of starchy, uh, very heavy brew. Uh, no, tastes good. They give you finger foods at the bar to Ooh. nibble on. Um, the name of that escapes me. What kind of fingers? Uh, breaded. <laughs> Pork mainly. Breaded something. Maybe uh, in the vernacular, la rata. <laughs> For all you uh, demolition man fans. Um, but uh, the... Uh, there's some evening entertainment. Uh, there's a small troupe of uh, singers, uh, not uh, musical. Uh, they're doing everything a cappella. Uh, but the place isn't too bad, and it begins, uh, the longer you stay, the more it thins out. Uh, there are rooms upstairs at this establishment that you can rent. Uh, however, it did look like it was pretty packed, so it'll be catch as catch can if you guys can stay together if you want separate rooms or if you just want one big room. Uh, I asked the bartender about there, the whoever's running the establishment about getting a, a room for all of us. Now uh, I can certainly do that for five gold pieces. Okay. It might be a little bit cramped, but noting the size of your associates, it should be more than uh, fine. We can even roll in extra mats. Okay. I'll give three beds, three mats. Works for me. <laughs> I want to ask also ask about the uh, if they have information about the uh, disappearances. That's rumor and conjecture by Hicks. There, there's no truth to that. Uh, whole villages do not just disappear. We call that Blarney. Uh, does he know anything about the notice that's posted outside the, the town? The 12 to 14 commandments? Uh, no, the, the, the other notice about the, the hearings that the council will have tomorrow. Uh, council meets every day. They're very important people. They've got a lot of stuff to do. You can tell that uh, this is not a political establishment. This is more of a... Eh, eh, 
uh, but it is filled with a variety of cultures here. I'm going to scan behind the bar. Does he have any of his uh, whiskeys or, or any distilled liquors behind the bar? Oh, yeah. I'm going to look, see if there's something really unusual looking, and I'm going to pay for the, a bottle, whatever it is. There is one in a Minotaur vase. He says that the head unscrews. He says he's never seen it before. It's very expensive, though. Sure. How much? Uh, it's 150 gold pieces. I, I asked how much it really was, not how much you're going to try to charge out of me. It was 125. Okay. So I'll give you 75. Great. You aren't taking it. <laughs> <laughs> For 150, I'll unscrew this gnome's head. <laughs> I'll take a glass of the Minotaur stuff. A, a I get, shot. A con save or a con check. Let's see how you like it. Ooh. Uh, not real well, apparently. Nine. Uh, it's a little bit harshy. Yeah, no. This, it tastes like Minotaur piss. Sorry, that's a pass. You got ripped off. A lot of people here like it. You probably just don't have the constitution to go ahead and take it. Oh, well, uh, he can take it, all right. <laughs> Leaf uh, points out that he has secured a room for everybody. Uh, Felix has returned from his jaunt across the street to Lilliputian land. Uh, Haggis, your beverage was good. Uh, Robert and Manfang, I assume you have eaten as well. So everybody's fed, everybody's happy except for Felix uh, because of course, he did not score, and he did not score. And he's not sleeping next to me. No trust. No trust. Uh, are you guys ready to retire for the night? I am. Uh, Leaf, you head upstairs. Uh, you find the room marked seven, lucky number seven. You find three beds and three thick but still woven mats on the floor. You got the room. You get first choice. I'll take bed. Everybody else roll a straight D20, just straight up. Uh, the two highest ones will get their choice first. 18. 13. 17. I ain't worried about it. I'll take my mat. 18 and 17 are my highs. Felix, bed. Uh, oh, yeah. Manfang, bed. Everybody else yeah. gets the mats. Haggis, uh, Robert, and Copius, you are on the mat. Uh, Leaf, Felix, and Manfang, great night. Great night of sleep. After a, five days of travel, you slept like a log. Uh, Haggis, Robert, Copius, D20, add your con modifier, please. 21. 16. 16. All three of you slept like uh, children as well. Uh, the morning breaks. Uh, the smell of fresh eggs and bacon are downstairs. Uh, and you notice that you have all slept in a little bit. Uh, the bartender asks, uh, weren't you guys going to go see the council? Is that started? Yeah, it starts at the crack of dawn. You might yeah. want to hurry. You're going to be late. You slap me a breakfast all on a slice of bread and I'll run. That works. <clears throat> How long uh, does the council meet for, typically? Uh, until everybody is gone. Everybody is allowed to state their business. Uh, and once everybody is done, the council is uh, dissolved for the day. So typically by like 9.30 or are they wrapping up around lunchtime? Mid-morning, <laughs> noon. Is it worth our time since we overslept to try to make it down there is what I'm trying to ask. Oh, you'll probably be okay. Okay. As long as I'm there before they shut the doors, they can't close out. Yeah, I'll it's, one it's of those just sausage a... sandwiches too, and sure. I'll be on my way. Everybody has an egg McMuffin, and uh, he says it's just two blocks down there. Uh, you can't miss it. It's the place with the big bell and the monument in front of it. Perfect. Out the door I head. Everybody's got their Egg McMuffin and their fresh ale. You are going down the cobblestone, weaving in and out of a variety of people, gnomes, dwarves, few halflings who eyeball your coin purses. 
uh, merchant traders, uh, just a general mix of people. Any of the 12 to 14 commandments have anything against uh, uh, halfling bowling? Uh, gnome bowling is discouraged, but halfling bowling was not listed. Uh, as you look down the street, you notice an um, enormous statue, 10 feet tall each, of a dwarf and a gnome shaking hands. Below them is the town bell. Uh, a very official looking building is there. And as you look ahead, uh, the red oval doors uh, open and the last person is going inside. I don't know, guys. I thought that there was just supposed to be only a bell. Do you think there's another place? Or is this where we should be? I think this is it. They didn't I guess. say anything about I the bet statue. You can't ring that bell more than once. <sighs> that you're right. I don't think hustling through me. the hustling through the door. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna run for the door. Uh, <laughs> yeah, stopping to watch. I just challenged him to ring the bell. All I can um, hear is Blue's voice from old school. <laughs> Blue, you're my boy, Blue. Uh, I think I'm gonna pass on it. I'm still uh, chowing down this McMuffin. You know, somebody should really sell these. These things are fantastic. Uh, if they only sold them at breweries. Uh, Leaf, Felix, Copius, you charge ahead, managing to sneak inside. Hagas, you have been challenged to ring the bell. Let's do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. As we slip in the door, that's what we're saying. <laughs> okay. Uh, are you ringing the bell, Hoggis? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a few moments later, the broad smile from ear to ear turns into a frown upside down as a multitude of armed individuals surround you immediately and ask you what you are doing. Uh, inside, Copious, Robert, Manfang, Felix, and Leaf, you take a seat in the back and try to remain uh, just barely noticeable as the council begins to become upset as to who is ringing the bell and are they under attack. The sergeant at arms storms past everybody and goes outside. Hagas, explain yourself to the guards. Um... I, I I persuadingly I'm like uh, I, I I look around, I'm like uh, who am I? Really a fast talker, are you, son? <laughs> <laughs> who am I? What what year is it? And like I'm oh, I look confused to make them per think. It. Persuasion check. Seventeen. You get the butt end of a spear in the buttocks region and are told, move along, move along, as they buy your uh, lame brain scenario. And, and wait, can I not go inside the... Door shut. Okay. Do, do <laughs> I... Sorry, can't get right. <laughs> go, go find your parents or your caretaker. <laughs> Whoever takes care of you, boy, go away. Inside, the council is brief that uh, someone of lacking in mental facilities is outside, but there's no trouble. Uh, they move quickly through the arguments, bitches, and gripes, including three individuals ahead of you. Uh, the first individual is a simple individual, a farmer, if you will. Uh, he's wearing uh, clothes of the earth, and he is complaining that he is the sole remaining member of Soto, uh, a Thorpe that has disappeared from the very tier of the mountainside. The gods themselves have sucked away all of our uh, buildings, and this is just, this, this cannot be done. He demands the military move in and investigate. Uh, the three council members, one dwarven female, one dwarven male, and one gnomish female, all look at him and point out that they have posted notices seeking adventurers to go ahead and examine his claim. The individual mutters under his breath a curse, which is not taken very well, and the sergeant at arms 
whacks him in the buttocks and sends him outside to where Haggis Crapstain is waiting. The next two are also from Lumberton and Belfast and have similar complaints. While they are not the sole survivors, they point out that their villages have uh, sustained significant damage and have literally been swallowed up by the ground itself. They too plead with the council and receive the same answer that, you know, the call has been put out. Just in the butt talks? Uh, no, these, these two are very respectful. They do not uh, curse the council at <laughs> all. Um, it just seems like that sergeant's got a thing about pounding pounding it in the butt. Yeah. And, you know, you never know. He's a dwarf. So uh, Felix spankings. Haggis, uh, you are outside. The farm, uh, a farmer type comes out and is just, uh, you're, you are confused because he sounds like a sailor. He just gives off a litany of uh, just abusive and very descriptive complaints about what the three person uh, council can do to themselves. And one of them involves a frog, which you aren't really kind of understanding that, but maybe it's some kind of uh, regional thing. Uh, would you like to talk to this farmer? Yeah, yeah. I, I go up to him and say, uh, what troubles you? Uh, it, my entire village has been swallowed up and these people do nothing. I don't know where they think they're going to get their grain from, but you know, that's that's going to be their problem if the crops can't be harvested. Do you feel your voice is not being heard enough by the council? Do you feel that? Are you a reporter? No. <laughs> is this like Ghostbusters advertising? <laughs> Do you feel like your body has been abducted by a ghost or a spiritual guy? I do, and he just repeats everything that you said, just like on TV. I do feel that. That's exactly how I feel. I feel neglected and left out. Uh, inside, Felix, Leaf, Copius, uh, Robert, and Manfang, you have heard the complaints of the three previous individuals, uh, the individual from Lumberton and the individual from Belfast, moved to the corner to discuss the situation, and the haggard-looking council points at you, and says, what is your complaint? Um, we are not here with a complaint. We were sent here by Sir Lego. Yeah, Lego. Ego. To Brother speak Lego. with Mary... Marijuana? Mary Joanna. Mary Joanna. Mary Joanna. Mary Joanna. Mary Joanna. The gnome, I am Mary Wynn. What may I do for you? We Sir, Father uh, Lego. Legolas there sent us here to speak with you to help with what ails you. Uh, everybody doesn't need to roll. They notice that uh, the individual from Belfast and the individual from Lumberton perk up noticeably, uh, as do several other members who uh, have already lodged their complaints, but wanted to hang out because they didn't have anything better to do because it's okay to loiter inside the council chambers, apparently. Uh, Sir Lego has sent you. Yes, 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 Ego Lego. Sir Lego Ego. Of my Ego. Uh, well, uh, everybody on this council knows uh, Sir Lego to be an honorable man, and I assume that he would not have given you this task if you were not uh, as honorable as he. Or am I mistaken? As I pull out my loot, no, we are not. Let me tell you of our adventures. Persuade me. Times or performance. You can do performance, uh, but there are three members of the council, and you give me four roles uh, one for every member of the council and one for the general populace. This cannot go wrong. I'm so excited. <laughs> 13, 19, 7, and 22 were the rolls in order. The general populace hoots and hollers. They, they are astonished by your performance. Uh, Mary Wind is also moved. However, Tang, a dwarven male, not so much. He rakes through his grizzled beard 
and says, I don't know if you guys even qualify for this task. So who wants to go with Tang? Copius, would you like to say your piece? Yes, uh, Tang, yes. Uh, of course we qualify for this task. <laughs> Copius, now known as Felix. <laughs> I was a soldier in the king's army. Um, I am skilled in the soldier lyrical <laughs> arts. Uh, I am more than qualified. As you can see, I am head and shoulders, literally, above everybody else in the room. Does that make you better? Yes, it does. It just makes <laughs> me better. Persuade the councilman. <laughs> 16. I've taken men like you down before, but... I do like a stout fighter in my midst. I will vote yay. Uh, outside Haggis, uh, the farmer is just unbelievably mad. He's like a wide receiver that drops the ball in the Super Bowl. He's just pissed. Uh, he asks if there's anything you can do about it. Yes. <laughs> the guards look in at you hear your response uh, he's very daft yes that that, that boy there's a, okay and the guards move <laughs> along at your obvious uh response uh he goes great will you follow me to soto and resolve our problem lead on <laughs> are you gonna wait for your That's a good adventure <laughs> August Crapstein was later killed on the road by an owl bear and eaten. He was crapped out, and his remains were found by Leaf, the druid, who was Young able to. Haggis, molested in street corner <laughs> by crazed farmer and spiritual <laughs> ghosts. August <laughs> woke up to uh, his father saying he's got a very special set of skills and he's going to rescue him. Uh, and 25 cents in his hand and a bad taste in his mouth. <laughs> 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 and he's missing his belt. <laughs> uh, but his teeth taste like leather. Uh, okay, uh, the guy's going to lead you out of Soto inside. <laughs> Gobius, Robert, Manfang, Felix, and Leaf. After Felix's stunning discourse with the individual, it appears as though you have all three votes needed by the council. Uh, they introduce you to the individuals from Lumberton and Belfast, point out they don't know where the smart ass from Soto went. Uh, but if you would like to discuss it with those individuals, come up with a secure plan uh, and provide proof that the issue is resolved, we will reward you um, fine steeds. Steeds? Are the these, value of a steed. Are these human sized uh, steeds or are these, you know, dwarf sized steeds? I good they're, they're, they are small but sturdy creatures that will be able to handle your uh proportions. Uh the Dwarven glory people. of having a steed in this is you will <laughs> you will cut down your movement uh, by two thirds. You will be able to zip around the countryside at a very fast rate and save on shoe leather. Steeds are very rare in these parts, uh, so you can safely assume that good value. If you sell them, you would make some good coin, or if you kept them, you would be able to move quickly throughout the nations. Thank you. Uh, I'm you six foot two, up. and I'm going to ride a miniature horse. Well, it's yes, a little yes. bit bigger than a miniature horse. <laughs> it's, uh, and they're colorful. Rainbow color? Oh, oh yeah. Ponies. It's a pony. I'm a pony. I'm a and pony. They're, they're called zonkeys. <laughs> they're the size of a donkey, but they look like a zebra on the front half. Zonkeys. Does this come with tack? Or are they going to charge us for tack? Persuade me.
10. Yeah, we'll buy the tack for you. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, if oh, you can, a zonky. so if you can go to these places, confirm, deny, resolve, whatever uh, the issue here, we will pay you in the form of zonkies. Nick said confirm or deny. Correct. The council doesn't seem to put much stock in these guys' accounts uh, as the individual from Lumberton and the individual from Belfast approach. Uh, they will point out that the council has been less or more skeptical than believed, uh, and they do not feel that the issue is real. But the issue is very real. The very foundation of our towns has collapsed. We have lost many good people. We have lost many, many buildings. What does the council require for proof one way or the other? Trey from Belfast, uh, Sarnan uh, from Lumberton, and Weave from Soto will have to go ahead and confirm or deny that A, uh, you did arrive and you did uh, confirm or deny the problem and you have it resolved. So they have to come back and let the council know that we did one of those. That is correct. As will you in order to receive your uh, rightful prize. Well, if they're dead, we don't get the, they can't confirm. That's the point. That we confirmed <laughs> or denied. Well, the three council members go, well, that's lunch. And but, but there's one more thing we need before we go. We need uh, a... Yes. We need an official piece of parchment bearing the crest of the council stating our intent just in case we run into anybody that gives us trouble on the road. So we have council's back. Deputized. Correct. And we've got another member of our group that's still outside that needs to be added into that little deal. I don't know that member. I don't know. He, 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 he walked away somewhere. He, the he sergeant at arms goes, was that the dimwit that rang the bell? Yeah, that can't get right. No, he, no. He's just, he ain't all there. Uh, he's already started to leave the town. Uh, uh, <laughs> of course he did. Uh, the uh, Sentinel will quickly scribble out something, throw a wax seal on it, and, and they will present it to... Uh, Copious V. Bitters has the scroll. There's your proof. It, screwed. Um, it, it points out that uh, the prize is the zonkies. Uh, it did have five zonkies in tack. Uh, there is a line through that. Six parentheses dimwit. Haggis, uh, the farmer needs to stop for a, a drink before they head out to Soto. So we got three locations we got to go to, confirm or deny, and then report back. Correct. What kind of time frame? I mean, how far out are all these places? Are they within the city limits or is this different communities outside? Different communities on different tier levels of the mountain. Uh, it should take a day to reach the closest one, which is Soto. Uh, another day to reach Belfast, and the third is at Lumberton. Uh, Soto is on the same level as Metcalf. Lumberton and Belfast are on the same tier of the mountain in different locations. Okay. Well, I don't know what everybody else is. If they're going to break for lunch, I'm going to start trying to, when I heard Sergeant said he's on his way to Soto, I guess we'll catch up with can't get right since that's our first stop along the way. <laughs> uh, can we grab provisions just in case we show up at one of these towns and there's nothing to eat? Sure. You can do that. Yep. Just basic. Yep. I, the egg McMuffin, I think that'll travel well. I think um, it will too. It looked, it tasted like it had lots of preservatives in it. I will take perception checks by everybody, but Haga's crap stain. Perception. 17. 20. 23. That was not a natural 20. 15. Manfang. 8. 8. eight. Leaf and Felix spot the familiar back head of an individual going into a nearby tavern that looks like Haga's crap stain. The good news is it's the same place where you're going to go ahead and get your preservative provisions. 
Uh, you can hear the individual from Soto loudly uh, lambasting the council at their lack of things and how he has to do everything himself. Uh, as you enter the building, the man is still bitching up a storm. Uh, Trey and Sehorn, uh from Lumberton and Belfast are following you, uh, asking you what you've done. Are you going to be able to handle this problem? How are you going to be able to handle this problem? How long do you think it's going to take to handle this problem? Why are you traveling alone? How do you know Sir Lego? Uh, where have you been? Why are you here? And is that a cancerous mole on your chin or are you okay? And Felix, one of them notices, wasn't my sister talking to you last night? Uh, it's possible. Was she in the Saskatchewan last night? No, she was not. Uh, then uh, No, I was in the Saskatchewan all night. That I don't think it was me. I just have one of those faces, you know. Mm, yes, you do. Uh, so Looks after like Will Wheaton, <laughs> Will Wheaton, uh, as you make your way into the Saskatchewan again, uh, the individual from Snowf uh, Weave is his name uh, is or Soto rather uh, is still bitching up a storm, and he asks for a liter, because this must be in Europe, uh, of his finest beverage before they head on out. Liter of cola? Liter of travel ale is what he calls it. Canada. A boot. He wants a boot of it. If Chris, Chris if you're watching, now nah, I'm not making fun of you, just the rest of your folks. Uh, Chris is one of our players on our Saturday night game. And he's very nice. Anyway, uh, so as you finally catch up to Haggis Crapstain, you notice that he cannot get in a word edgewise with Weave just adamantly bitching. Um, what do you want to do? I'm going to walk up to Barkeep and tell him I want uh, seven days of travel rations, at least one more muffin, egg McMuffin special. And then I'm going to go to the moon house. The moon, moon house? The outhouse. The oh, 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 gotcha. Has the out shape of the moon. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, okay. Uh, it'll take a while for him to prepare that. Are the rest of you asking for similar uh, amounts? Yes. Haggis crap stain uh, in between the uh, profane laced uh, tirade of your new patron uh, you discover that your associates have tracked you down and found you uh, I'm sure Robert of Zeppelin is still laughing about the fact that he got you to ring the bell what would you like to do um, I, I, just, I just step out of the bar is, is he going to notice if I do the 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 rambling, profound man. No, he's just going to keep screaming and bitching. You give me a perception roll to see if you notice everybody else is asking for seven days of rations. I got a fifteen. Yeah, you notice that everybody else is asking for seven days of rations, and Felix asked, really likes I, his egg McMuffin. I asked for eight rations. Uh, everybody, give me five gold pieces. Hagas, give me uh, five gold and uh, eight silver pieces ish uh after uh robert returns from the moon unit zappa uh the food will be prepared in burlap sacks and give off a delicious scent uh the individual weave from soto has not stopped bitching yet um and he is talking to anybody who will notice uh, you can already tell this is going to be a long trip. Uh, Trey and Santon uh, are just, Jesus Christ, Jeebus Crisp. Uh, it's going to be a long trip, and it's on foot. Uh, do you guys want to talk to any of them? Yeah, I want to talk to the one that's running his mouth and tell him that we're going with him to help him if he'll shut up. I will shut up. 
Uh, he doesn't like the look of your large frame, uh, and he is concerned. FYI, all three of these individuals are gnomes. So Mary Wind had a special affinity in her heart for them. So you gather your belongings and you head out. Uh, the good news is Weave points out that you will get there by nightfall if you carry a brisk clip to your step. That work for everybody? Uh, you go along the muddy road, you notice you will actually pass by several groups of individuals with these uh, zonkeys, uh, and they're quite sturdy creatures. Uh, they aren't real tall, they aren't real short, uh, but they're really firm and rugged. Uh, they also have, shall we say, a predisposition to spit. So well, while none of you approach unless you want to, uh, you will notice that anyone who does approach the zonkeys may or may not get spit upon. This looks like a half libra, zebra and a half a llama. Uh, half donkey, half zebra, front half of the zebra. Questions for any of the zonkey riders? Just kind of measuring myself up to see how I'd look on one. Yeah. My legs drag. Uh, you'd buy it. Uh, you're gonna have to. The, the bodies are longer, so you'll be you'll be low riding it with your hand over the bridle <laughs> as it <laughs> goes cruising down. <laughs> uh, Few hours later, uh, you are approaching a slight rise and you notice a few buildings. Uh, out in the fields to your right is one building. Uh, Weave points out that poor Mary, that was her place. Are the Mary. buildings destroyed? Uh, there's something wrong with that building. Uh, but you really can't tell what it is. Can we walk you, up towards it? Once you walk up to it, you notice that the ground around it is overly saturated with water. I, I mean, there's like a lot of it. It's very muddy, very mucky. Uh, and Weave makes a religious uh, movement, uh, mumbles under his breath about poor Mary, and uh, says, uh, so are we going to go look at Soto? What happened to Mary? Yeah. We don't know. She's gone? Uh, the, the night of the great loss, uh, there was a freak snowstorm uh, that must have come through the pass, and her building was covered in a solid sheet of ice. Is it why the ground is so wet now from where the ice melted or is something yeah. else going on? I'm asking them. I guess. Weave is not very smart. I was going to say, uh, Felix so was in the military. I don't suppose he was a, a siege engineer, was he? No. <laughs> That's not helpful. Not in the least. So is the structure still standing other than it's wet around it or is it fallen? The roof is not present it has fallen in uh the warped wood boards uh are still present although they have taken a lot of damage uh can we move through safely to just look around to see if any signs of a struggle what the cause of the damage was who wants to go inside the dilapidated structure with copious haggis do it I think Crabstain wants to go. Do it. I'll poke my head in. Haggis? Yeah, I, I want to approach to about, you know, not like, I don't know. Close. Copious. I'm not going inside. Close to it. No. Copious, on, it looks like you're the only one that's going inside. All right, I'll go inside. Uh, give, me a, little devil. give me a straight up D20. This is a one room building. Very small. 11. 
Uh, you notice significant water damage and the muck uh, when you enter, it goes all the way up to your diminutive knee. Uh, this ground is way saturated, uh, which is unusual because you didn't notice any thunderstorms on your way to Metcalf. At, when I leave the building, I'm going to ask the the three gnomes we're traveling with if there has been a flood through the area, if there's ever a flood, flash flood, anything of that nature, storms recently. This is summer months, uh, so no, the the floods occur in the spring, and that would have been several weeks ago. And Mary disappeared when? Uh, a week and a half ago the same time that uh, Soto went down. Uh, the individual tray from Belfast will point out that the following day, uh, issues similar occurred at his location. And uh, Sarton from Lumberton points out that the same thing happened to their statue in the town square the following day after that. So it appears as though the events all occurred within a three day rise. And they, the, all three of them, they had the, the ground was saturated like this? In spots. Uh, the individual from Belfast and the individual from Lumberton will point out that they were out foraging when uh, the buildings were displaced. The only one that actually witnessed the buildings disappearing is Weave. And can Weave share again exactly when he says they disappeared, what happened to the buildings that disappeared? They sunk. They sunk. I will We're admit. On the mountainside, right? I'm sorry? We're literally on the mountainside or something like that? It, it's, you could kind of say it's kind of like Peru with the tiered structures. Uh, so there's enough room for several small buildings on each of these tiers. Uh, and some, like Mary's place, is on the next tier down. So Soto, there's a rise, uh, and then there is the small enclave of buildings for Soto. I just meant like if a house has disappeared, it's possibly then it might have sunk down inside. Correct. Uh, Weave asks you, are, are, are we doing, and then a string of profanities. <laughs> I'm ready to move on. I don't have any other questions. Ready. 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 Uh, you notice that the way up to the next tier kind of zigzags. Uh, you also notice that the ground on the road is kind of firm. Uh, there's no uh, explosion of pebbles that would indicate uh, a flood. Uh, the ground is just pretty solid. I will take uh, perception at disadvantage from everyone. Does that mean you don't use your modifier? No, it means you got to roll twice and take the lowest. You okay. can still use your modifier. 19 for coaches. 14. Frankie, or Noodles fumbled. I got a 16. I got 16. a 16. Uh, Felix, Copius, Haggis, and Robert all noticed the presence of a singular horseshoe print in pristine condition. Just one, not four, just one. Just one. It's off by the side of the road. Uh, we'll look How big? closely at it. Standard horseshoe print? Standard horse, not a zonkey. What did you say, Copious? Just looking at the print closely. Is there anything unusual about the print? Uh, that was one of them. It's not, a, it's not a zonkey. It's an actual horse. Yes. Who had the 20? Felix, was that you? You yeah. noticed that there are some drag marks as though someone has tried to obscure the prints. Which direction are these prints going? Are they going to print? Is it going towards or away? Towards Soto. So you can surmise with your 20 that maybe there were more prints, but they have been dispelled. How deep is this impression? 
Is it I don't do impressions. <laughs> can I, I uh, it, it is a it is a medium sized horse. Can we ask the the three gnomes how how uh, common it is to have horses traveling up the the step here? What did you bring your tuxedo and your top hat? Nobody can afford horses here. When was the last time they saw a horse here? Here? Yeah, on in any of the steps we're crossing. Uh, Trey says, I think I saw one as a boy. The the present the lack of knowledge is astonishing, and you can all surmise that these guys have probably not seen a horse in this region in a forever ago. I got to say, wasn't the cleric on a horse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was a different nation. Yeah, you guys are in Sof now, or Snof. You guys have crossed uh, national lines. He was in the north. You guys are now in the southwest. Okay. You guys are in, like, Tennessee now. So, mm. but without the cool horses. <laughs> I don't know. We got evidence of one cool horse, at least. Mm -hmm. you, that you do. You rolled high enough to gather that information. Okay. All right, I'm going to take a picture with my brain here. <laughs> and now I'm going to move on. Uh, we've motions for you because he's ahead of the group. He did not spot the horseshoe. Surprise, surprise. He is walking up the incline, facing you, waving you on. I will take a regular perception check by everybody. 14. 13. 13. Plus two. two. So 15, 15 for noodles is 15. I'm 13. 13. Uh, I think only two of you had 15 or better copious and man fang uh, as the swearing profane lace tirade begins anew. You notice pebbles cascading down the rough incline leading up to the buildings and then you see something moving in the dirt kind of land sharking its way down i'm going to motion to our our traveling party to to step to the sides of the the off the road to the extent possible and point to whatever's coming down it Exasperated by your lack of diligence to move up to his building, he looks like the guy out of Blazing Saddles, the old Western dude who's just swearing up a storm. All of the sudden behind him, as you guys, I, do you guys all part the way and get off the road? Okay. Uh, you see several creatures come up behind Weave and grab a hold of them it looks like they're made of mud maybe mud men navy seals covered in dirt and mud you aren't sure but he screeches loudly and is brought down onto his buttocks as this kind of configure con the mess of mud creatures uh begin to overcome him and you see his feet just wobble out of control and his muffled screams can be heard. I will take initiative from everybody. Sixteen. Uh, Nineteen. Fifteen. Say it again, Six, Noodle. Sixteen. Uh, Twenty-one. And what was Noodle? I got nine. Uh, okay, we will start with the 21, Robert of Zeppelin. Uh, you're up. These creatures seem to be overwhelming him. I'll take out my blade. It's what I do. Okay. He's only, <coughs> excuse me, he's only a short distance away, so you can charge and attack if you'd like. I shall. I will take Arcana from everybody. Uh, let me know if you get 23 or better. Only 16. What'd you get? Mm. It's my arcana. 
18. There you go. Oh, my arcane is negative three. Uh, he rolls yeah, a natural negative 20, one. but he got a negative three on it. <laughs> Not going to happen. Okay. None, none, of you know what, none of you know what these creatures are. Go ahead, Robert of Zeppelin. You're up. Natural 20 plus seven. Easily hits these things. Easily. Okay, sorry about that. Seven damage. Hmm. Okay. Uh, next up is the 19, Copious V Bitters the third. Um, they're within uh, within distance for my Eldritch Blast, so I'm going to uh, do my boomstick impression and shoot okay. one of them. I'm going to miss horribly. How horribly? Oh, it's a nine. It's not a fumble. <laughs> I was going to say, are you going to kill Weave? <laughs> Heroes! Uh, next up is the 17, and that's me. Uh, let's see if they go, continue to go after Weave or decide to go after you guys. Uh, they split off from Weave, who is choked with mud and for once cannot scream or yell as he's vomiting chunks of mud. I will go after. Uh, first one is copious v bitters. That ain't gonna make it. That's a horrible miss. Uh, next up is Felix. Thirteen. Uh, armor class fourteen. Next up is uh, Felix again. Ooh, that's not going to make it. That's a six. Uh, and Leaf, the druid. Ooh, uh, that's an 18 plus three, 21. One of these mud creatures uh, hits you. Oh, crap. Uh, I need a DC 11 versus dexterity, please. And you suffer two hit points of damage. Muted. Fifteen. <laughs> oh, Sorry. You pass. Uh, the thing spews mud at you, but it hits you from your nose down. So you are not blinded. You are not knocked over. Uh, that is it for them. Uh, next up are my 16s. Uh, that is Leaf, and that is Felix. Felix, you have two on you. One for each sword, man. Muted. Uh, now I got Frank's problem here. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I have a lot of problems. Let's I meant the other Frank. Yeah, one we have too many Franks. I meant Frank. <laughs> I meant Leap's problem. I should have said. <laughs> I'm gonna go draw both of my short swords and focus on the one that is on my right. Number four. Uh, sevens, both of them. Both of them miss. You slice through the mud-like exterior, but do no damage. Leaf, you are up. Um, I rolled a 16. That hits. Uh, six points of damage with my scimitar. Whatever's in front of me. <laughs> number two is in front of you. Robert has number one, and Felix has number three and four. Uh, next up is the 15. Where did Crapstain go? Not sure, just disappeared. He just uh, had sudden computer issues. His computer just died on him. Okay. Uh, I know that feeling as well. Uh, I'll roll for him. Uh, cannon that's, fodder. Cannon fodder. That, that's, that's 15. What does he normally use? Anybody know? Uh, daggers, I think, isn't it? Does he use two of them? I think so. Uh, one hit, one miss. 
Uh, he will go after the one on Felix's right. Four, four hit points of damage. Uh, nicely done. Uh, although he's not here to take credit. Uh, next up, I believe, is Noodle with a nine. What are you doing, bud? Um, uh, I'm attacking with my great act. Roll 20 sided dice. Add your hit chance. Plus seven. Thirteen. Uh, that is enough to hit. Who are you going after? No, I'm gonna go on the one after. I'm gonna go on the one after Felix. Uh, three or four. The one that crap stain hit, or the one that hasn't been hit yet. One that hasn't been hit. That 12, is number 12, three. How much damage? Roll twelve. Add five. Eight plus five. Eight. That maps on. Uh, that's 13. 13, yeah. 13. 13. Uh, Felix, you get bumped from both sides as your compatriots rush to your aid. Uh, new round. We'll start with the 21 again. Roll 20 something. <laughs> yep, that's easy. Uh, let's see here. 11 hits these things. And then 10 points of damage. Nicely done. Total of 17 on that one. Uh, next up is the 19, Copious V Bitters, the third. Uh, do we, are there still some of these creatures on uh, Weave? Uh, Weave is still spitting and puking. It does not appear as though he is currently under attack. Okay, then I'll attack uh, one of the, the one that attacked me. Okay. Natural 20 with uh, Eldritch Blast. Very nice. Damage? Uh, any bonus for the, the natural 20? Yes, reroll your damage and then add any modifiers afterwards. So if you're rolling a d6, roll two d6s, but if it's a d6 plus three, you only add the plus three ones. House yeah. rules are always fun. Yeah, uh, I, I got five. Total? Total. <laughs> Total. Wow. Uh, next up is the 17. That's me. Uh, we'll go after copious few bitters. Ugh, that's a four. We'll go after leaf. That's a 17 plus three. So it's a dirty 20. Uh, give me another DC 11 dex leaf. They don't like the drug. This time you're only taking one hit point of damage though. Still muted. I rolled a 19. Uh, again, you're covered in more mud vomit, but you are not incapacitated in any way. Uh, Felix, since you have two associates helping you, you are going to be 3-4. Uh, Crapstain will be 1-2, and uh, Manfang will be 5-6. That's a 3. Felix, one's going after you. And a 5. One is going after Noodle. First up, Felix. Three plus three, does a six get you? No. Noodle. Eight plus three, does an 11 get you? As my dice fail me. Next up are the 16s, Leaf and Felix. Which one of, which one of us is going first? Is it you, Leaf? Uh, Leaf can go first if he wants. I hit for just three points. Fair enough. Chopping it down. Well, Felix, you've got associates flanking you on either side. Yeah, so I'm going to go for the one on the right again. Okay. Uh, both of them hit. One for nine points and the other one for eight points. Very close. It does not look well. Uh, next up is uh, Haggis Yes. Next up is Haggis. Haggis, you successfully uh, double daggered uh, one of the opponents on Felix. Would you like to replicate that? Yes. Yes. AC or DC 11 on these guys or AC 11 on these guys rather. 16. Now we assume that you were using your dagger twice. Was that incorrect? 
No, I'll use it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll use it twice. Okay. We didn't know, so we made shit up. Okay, that's good, fine. Uh, yeah, 19. Both hit? Damage? Damage. Um, die four. Three and then plus five. Dead. Uh, mud splatters everywhere, covering you and Felix as your daggers slice through this apparently enchanted mud uh, because there is no skeleton. Uh, no other form hidden beneath it. Uh, next up is a Noodle with the nine. You are on Felix's left. Um, what? Roll your dice. All right. So if you hit, you don't hit. Yeah, I'm hitting. Eleven plus seven. <coughs> that hits. Eighteen. Roll damage. Twelve side. So it's already out. Sorry. Add, add five to whatever it says. Nine damage. Nice. Nice. Still alive, but nice. Top of the order, 21. Robert of Zeppelin. Sixteen to hit. Yep. Eight points damage. Uh it falls to the ground, splashing you with mud. You look like you're a mud flap on a truck. Uh next up. Uh, is my 19 copious v bitters there's still one standing correct uh there is still two standing all right I'm attacking. one on felix's left and one on you and leaf so the one on leaf and i i attacked and i hit with a 15 mm -hmm. and i did 13 points of damage <laughs> this is what they call my boom stick uh, your boomstick is highly effective. You and Leaf are now covered in mud as well. There's only one left, and it is on Felix and or Noodle. Noodle odd, Felix even. That's a two. Felix, it hates you. Uh, that is a 19 plus three. Or I'm sorry, that is a 13 plus three, 16. Does 16 get you? Yes, 16 hits me. Uh, give me a DC 11 versus dexterity and take three hit points. So with my dexterity, I rolled a 21. You are covered in mud from your nose down. You suffer no ill effects. Uh, you can go first since it just attacked you and it's the only one standing. And then Leaf will get his attack as well. So I hit with one sword for four points. That is enough. Uh, it blows up and spews mud all over the place. Uh, Leaf, yours is still alive. I'm showing 13 hit points, I think. Or is it dead? I thought uh, Copius dead. just killed it. Yes, Copius did just kill it. Uh, all four mud creatures have uh, disembodied themselves. Uh, you can now fully hear the hacking, coughing, and choking of Weave of Soto. Uh, he is just having a really hard time clearing his lungs. Uh, the good news is both Trey and Sartan have passed out from the scary situation uh, and are just now coming to. Go over and uh, see what I can do for uh, the weevil up there. Okay. I want to gather up some of this mud, and put it in a little packet, and if we causes any trouble, I'm going to get it out and throw it at him. Fair enough. Leaf, importantly, what are you doing? What am I doing? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to kind of look at it, look around, and see if I can figure out what was going on. Odd Leaf, even Copious. Four. Uh, Copious, as you're gathering some mud, you find an unusual object in the mud. It is an irregularly shaped piece of agate sliced off. It's almost like a thick coin, uh, but it's got an etch in it. It has been etched 
on one side of it. Does the etch look like a symbol or just like a, a scratched mark of some kind? It looks like a sigil, a magical uh, sigil. So I'm going to hold it and I'm going to go up to uh, the bard uh, just to see if in his traveling and the and the druid in their travelings, if they've ever recognized it. And can I do a knowledge check as well? Uh, Arcana checks from all three of you. Oh. 18. Uh, no. 22. Uh, Leaf and Robert of, um, what are you? Zeppelin. <laughs> uh, Leaf and Robert of Zeppelin both notice that this is a symbol from the elemental table of elements. Leaf will notice that it is from the quasi plane of mud. Interesting. Have the other two gnomes uh, awoken yet? Yes. Uh, one of them has soiled themselves. Odd Belfast, even Lumberton. Belfast has soiled himself. Both, uh, both praise uh, the ability of the party to act in coordination against fearful mud creatures. I just want to ask him if they've ever seen these creatures or the residue of these creatures ever before today never in our travels or our time about to put this mass adventure of how i destroyed a mud golem on my own <laughs> put that into my next song wow uh felix can retell that to his next uh, potential conquest as can hey, just... uh copious you did find the etched stone in the remains of your creature. I, I'll look to see if it's in any of the other remained areas to see if they have similar stones. Uh, anyone want to help him? Yeah, I'll help. You'll search all the remains. Now that I've seen it, I'm in on it. Uh, Leaf, you find one. Uh, Copious, you find another. And Robert Zeppelin, you also find one. Uh, these are slender tiger eye kind of gemstones. Each has a similar etching uh, of the elemental symbol for mud uh, as correctly diagnosed by Leaf. Uh, Robert, you were helping weave, right? Yeah. Uh, the string of uh, profanities is both profound and should probably be written down as they are expansive. Uh, those things are, he wants those things to do things that you don't even think are possible by human standards. Not even Felix has heard of such an event and doesn't think that uh, it is possible to do those things to themselves. I don't know if Felix get, gets around a lot. Yeah, uh, th this weave guy, he's he's like the urban dictionary of Soto, apparently. He uh, makes, we, he makes uh, Felix blush. Yeah, yeah. And imagine what he'd do to Felix's uh, courtesans. Uh, strangely enough, you notice that the rest of the zigzagging trail appears uh, undisturbed, as if these mud creatures were able to move seamlessly along the trail. I got a question. I just don't know how to phrase it. Just say it. Just spit it out. I wanted to ask the Gnomich people here if they, you know, has there been trouble in the past with any kind of magical, no, magical users like elementalists? Or any, is there problems? Is there a section of this mountain terrain that has based just magic users or? Uh, is is that how you are going to phrase it? And is that all you're asking? Well, that's what I said. I don't know how to phrase it. No, that's fine. Uh, Weave and Trey are going to, we have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, Saran from Lumberton thinks for a minute. No. You hesitated. I've never seen these creatures before, but I've heard tales of them. Ah, tales. 
what tales have you heard? Well, in the drunken ramblings from our lumber camp, uh, I have heard of many things. Dragons, demons, creatures that are able to turn you to stone, uh, creatures that come up from the ground and attack you at night uh, while you are making sweet, sweet love to your significant other. Uh, I have always thought these mm. were children's tales uh, that uh, nothing could be drawn from them realistically however after seeing you brave heroes deal with these creatures that are able to come up it gives me pause to think that maybe some of the individuals in our lumber camp were not just stupid drunks but may have had legitimate claims well did some of these uh claims then happen in any certain area or is it just anywhere and everywhere d12 against me Twelve. Eleven. Uh, one of our guys said he found a cave. A cave? But, mm. but it was blocked. Okay. It was blocked by a rock creature. Rock lobster! <laughs> <laughs> Only so many will understand this. Two will not. That's right. I don't. Um, but he was an idiot. He was worse than Weave. Okay. Maybe else got questions upon my questions that might be able to phrase it better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Where is this cave? Uh, it is on the ridge above our camp. And Lumberton is number three in the string of Thorpes that you will be visiting. Of course it is. Of course it is. It, it's almost like it was written that way. How weird. Uh, next up is the rise and then the missing buildings from Soto. You do notice from your uh, depressed area that there are maybe two and a half buildings still intact here, although they are horribly lurched to one side. At Soto or where we fought these... Uh... Soto. The, golems. the the mud golems are on the zigzag path up to Soto, which is on the next tier. Uh, the buildings look like uh, the foundations were messed with, like the uh, building with Mary Mary's you will, home. You will have to go up top to investigate. I'll go up and take a good look. I'll go inside. As on you. As you all reach the rise, you notice that some of the stone outlines of the buildings are present, but then there are one, two, three, four, five buildings that seem to have sunk directly into the side of the mountain. Behind that, there are three more buildings that have sunk. To the far left of the rise, there are two buildings present, and to the far right, there is a half of a building present. I want to go up to the half building. And is the ground soggy? The ground is not soggy. It's firm, like the road. It's firm. It's like it just encompassed the building and dragged them down. So you can so, kind of see like a sidewalk leading up to a building, but now it's just a vacant lot. Okay. The building that's half in the ground, I mean, is there like windows you can look into at this point? They're just gone. Everything's gone. It's just walls. I see. Uh, it, you'll see. Actually, what I'm looking to see if the buildings are hollow on the inside, or if they literally like filled with the earth as they got sucked down. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, you do not see any buildings. You, what you'll see is picket fence, picket fence, line of crops, big dirt area. It's almost like a building has been sucked down and the earth has risen back up in its place. No, so okay. it is possible that the hollow buildings are still below the ground uh, and any occupants uh, in the week and a half since this occurred may still be inside, although may be quite ill or near death. Mm. Um, can we go up to one of the sites and just push on the, I'm just curious to push on the ground. Does, does it seem loose or is it firm as well where the house would have been? Loose. Like overturned soil. 
The, did any, um, just out of curiosity, for any of this area, root cellars, anything that would lead underground, spitballing a well? There is a, there is a well directly in front of the trail beyond the buildings that should be there that are not. Uh, we will tell you that there is a root cellar on the far left building that is still mostly intact. Uh, he does not know if the tavern on the far right had a root cellar or not. I would like to investigate the root cellar just to go to and see, did it fill anything disturbed in there? Just ruling out everything here. That's fair. Uh, Copius is going to the root cellar. Where's everybody else going to? I'm going to follow him. He I said that, you said the one building was half half way down. Yep, that's to the right. That is the old tavern, and he is not sure if it had a root cellar. The I'm going to go to the old tavern then. Okay. Anybody going to go with Leaf? I'll go with Leaf. Hagas, which group are you going with? I, 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 I'm going to go with Leaf, actually. So I have Leaf, Felix, and Hagas going to the old tavern, which is half dilapidated. Copius, Robert, and Manfang are going to the left, where the root cellar is at, uh, of the abandoned building. Uh, is that right? Yeah, we're all going to die because we split the party. That's true. I'll take uh, Noodle, Robert, and Copius investigation. Leaf, Felix, and Hagas perception. 14. 16 for Copius. 11, because my investigation is minus three, which is crap. My 15. perception, 25. 15. 15. Robert? 16. Okay, most of you guys notice everything. So inside the root cellar, uh, you notice it is a standard root cellar. Uh, however, the wall closest to the buildings that have been destroyed, all of the shelves have fallen and broken uh, pottery is present. It's almost like there was a disturbance. The formation of the root cellar is consistent, although the wall closest, which would be interior right, uh, has shown signs of disruption. Leaf, Felix, and Haggis, you notice that the tavern has sustained massive damage, but there appear to be a few bottles of something available if you want to go down inside. I would say yes. Yeah, I'll follow, follow Leaf. Yeah, I'll go for Leaf. Leaf, Felix, and August, you go down in and you find the remains of some pottery that have and or once contained some alcoholic beverages. Uh, give me perception checks by you guys. And 21. 16. Felix, you find a lot of broken bottles. Leaf, Haggis. Uh, Haggis, you find two bottles that are unbroken. Leaf, you find three. Noodle, Robert, and Copious. Perception check. <laughs> Was that whiskey by any chance? It is whiskey. 21. 17, Copious. Johnny Walker. Noodle. Thirteen. Leaf, uh, each one of your three bottles is five gold pieces. Haggis, each of your two is also worth uh, five gold pieces. Felix, all your broken shit amounts to butkus. Uh, Noodle, Robert, Copious, there's a shadow behind you uh, in the entrance to the root cellar. When you say there's a shadow, a do you shadow? mean like a shadow, like something is casting a shadow or like a shadow on the wall that shouldn't be there? Something is casting a shadow in the opening to the root cellar. I'm taking out my great axe just to be safe. It is an enormous arachnid and it is in the opening where only one of you can melee. The others can use missile weapons if they want. I will take initiative from Here's Noodle, Robert, weapon. and Copious. Twenty-three. 
Don't worry, Noodle. I never miss. 13. I got You're so 15. funny. Yeah, these two are probably going to go ahead and do missile weapon because I don't have one. So I'm moving in with missile order. Opius, you're up first with the 23. Uh, 19 to hit. Hits. And 11 damage. Ouch. <laughs> Eldritch Blast, baby. Fair enough. Uh, the giant spider does not appreciate that. Turns around, shakes its ass, and shoots a web out at all of you. Uh, everybody give me DC 12 versus strength. Noodle, Robert, and Copious. 20. I got 13. Are we adding anything to our DC 12? Strength. I got 13. He got uh 14. Sorry, I, uh, 19 was mine. Sorry, correction. All three of you are caught on the other side of the web. You're going to have to cut your way through it, and that will be Robert and Noodle. Uh, Felix, Leaf, Haggis, perception checks, please. 21. 22. 19. Haggis, Felix, Leaf, you hear the trio of civilians screaming for their lives outside of this hole that you have uh, gone into. Sounds like they're in a wee bit of trouble. Stop or there will be trouble. Want to head back out? I guess there's nothing in here but just a bunch of broken bottles. Let's head on out. Haggis? Yeah, let's go. Yeah, all broken bottles, all of them. Yeah. Leaf, Felix, Haggis, as you crest the depression, you notice a pair of giant spiders are attacking and have already wrapped up. Weave, not his day. Weave is caught in a web. You cannot hear his screaming, but you can hear Trey and Sartan screaming for their lives. Uh, I'll need initiative from all three of you guys. Whew. 16. 20. 12. Uh, 20. Haggis, your first one out of the pit. Uh, there's two giant spiders. What do you want to do? Two daggers okay. on the one spider. Okay. You're hanging up. Twelve. Spider. Twelve hits. Sixteen. Six damage or is that your other hit oh, that's my other dagger yep both hit awesome. and five damage uh you want the one on the left or the one on the right uh, left fair enough uh next up is the 16 uh felix i'm afraid of spiders so i'm gonna use my long bow and uh Shoot an arrow at him. Miss, miss, miss. Hit weave. <laughs> 19. 19 hits him. Are you going for the one on the left or the one on the right? Uh, we'll go for the one on the right. Okay. 11 damage. Mm, nicely done. Uh, let's see. I got one and one. Uh, I will go after Felix. Uh, 16 plus 3, 19. Haggis, 10 plus 3. Does a 13 get you? No. Okay. Uh, for Felix, uh, bite is on the edge. Four hit points of damage, Felix. Leaf, you're up. Muted. 
Sorry. Four uh, points, the one on the left. Uh, back in the root cellar, Noodle and Robert, uh, you have this beautiful spider web that is formed in the opening. You're going to have to cut through it or it's use missile or magic to attack this That's thing. I am using, I, I'm using my long sword to cut through. Uh, AC 10, and I don't think it has very many hit points, five hit points to do it. So AC 10 and five hit points to slice through the silky strands. 20 to hit. And 10 points to, of dam. You slice the big Zorro, or in your case, the big R, and you cut them apart. Uh, a noodle, you had the 13, so you can actually run through if you want. I think I'll shoot my crossbow. Fair enough. At plus three. 16. Hit. Damage one die eight. Here, you don't have one. Six plus, what's your bonus? No, no, no. Piercing plus one. So seven. Seven. 18. Uh, back over to the pit, non pit. Uh, poor Weave is wrapped up. You have two spiders, one on uh, Felix, one on Haggis. Uh, we'll go with a 20. Crap stain, you are up first. All right, so I am going to attack again. Which one is on? You're on the left? Yeah, all right. Uh, two daggers again. That's a three. That's a miss. And that's a 14. Uh, that's a hit. Okay. And three damage. Felix, you're up. Is a nine enough to hit? <laughs> no. <laughs> then I missed. Uh, they will go after you guys since they're both still alive. Felix, uh, you will have advantage on your next attack. That's a natural one. Uh, Haggis crab stain, 12 plus three is 15. Does that get you? Oh, almost, but no. Fair enough. Uh, let's finish it off with leaf in this one. Go ahead. And then we'll return to the root cellar. Uh, seven points. On the one on the left. That is enough to kill it. Haga's crap stain. Yours is dead. In the root cellar, uh, Robert of Zeppelin has tore through the web. Noodle has charged forward. They are on their wiper, wiper blades. Copious fee bidders, you are up first because you won the initiative with a 23. So natural 20 to hit. So reroll both, or you get two rolls of your damage dice and you can add your modifier. I got two with my two rolls. The good news is that Plus is enough three. to kill the giant spider because it only had two hit points left. Uh, courtesy of your associates. Back in the uh, rubble with Weave, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, one of the spiders is still left, and that is the one on Felix. So, Haggis Crap Stain, courtesy of Leaf, uh, yours is dead. You can go off and help Felix, or you can release Weave from his strandy prison. Well, wait, well, wait, wait, wait. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I'm going to check the spider, you know, investigate it. Sure. It appears to be dead. Uh, next up, Felix. Felix yours is still well alive. It's hairy little legs twitch at you, Haggis. So you said I get an advantage with my attack this time. What does that mean? Just one of your attack. Uh, you can reroll. You can roll two dice for one of your attacks. Take the high roll. Okay. After your modif add your modifier to both rolls. Yep. Uh, 16. Does Hits. That hit? Yep. All right. Uh, 10 damage. Yikes. Uh, that is enough. You've skewered all of its eyes with that shot, uh, and it falls dead uh, right next to Haga's crap stain, who's poking his. <laughs> 
for some reason. Uh, that puts us at 640. That's a little bit over two hours. What'd you think? Uh, you are in Soto. You have faced mud creatures and giant spiders. Uh, anybody want to cut loose, weave? Mud, you... mud creatures? I, I'm sorry. I was attacking mud golems. Yeah. Right, the great mud golem of uh, Soto. Uh, the thing was 18 freaking feet tall, and it had like 3,000 hit points. It had laser beams on its head, laser freaking beams. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and call this one uh, a wrap, because you guys right. have gone through uh, one of the three. Uh, Leaf, what would you think? Oh, that, that was uh, that was a good time. That's fun working our way up through it. I like that we're moving kind of slow up through it. it. Gives me a chance to get myself reoriented to the game. It will speed up quickly, but yes, yeah. I I figured a nice gentle incline would be. Oh, yeah. uh, AJ, what'd you think? Good. I'm having fun. I can't wait to get back to the uh, <laughs> Patrick Swayze's daughter. <laughs> Man, keep it in your pants. Oh, what I say? You know, Sounds so bad type. about that. She has, uh, she's large tracts of land. Huge tracts, huge tracts of land. Uh, what I do have one question, though, about our characters. Uh, when we were, when we slept, did we heal at all? If yes. not, yes. okay, we did. Yes, you would have healed and gotten all your spells back. My apologies. Perfect. Good. 25% uh, of the Franks, what'd you think? Go ahead. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I like moving, it. Moving along. 25% of the Franks. Oh, I, I'm enjoying it quite well. I am excited to uh, move on to face more mud golems and maybe land sharks with, with freaking, freaking laser, laser beams. beams. The bullet. I wonder if those will appear. Uh, Haggis Crapstain, my favorite name. What'd you think? Uh, that's can't get right. He's special. Haga still having fun? I enjoyed it. Very good. Uh, last but certainly not least, Copious V Bitters, the third uh, purveyor of uh, business minds everywhere. Still good? Still, still good. Still really curious as to what's happening to the villages. What? Anxious they're, to solve this mystery. Yeah, just, I, just, I'm anxious to solve the mystery. Where was Copious in the root cellar when we were fighting? Yeah. Uh, didn't he do the Eldridge him? Blast? Yeah. I'm the one that killed the damn spider, you... It seemed like we did more than you, though. Yeah. Yeah, you killed a spider web. I think. <laughs> We're beginning to find out. You have been granted the broom of cleaning. Spinach <laughs> was, you know, he was like that thief off of Conan, the barbarian. That stabbed him in the head. That comes up and stabs a dead creature. I, that's, I, that's what you're blasted. I'm thinking Robert of Zeppelin is due to find the bad mitten stick of slain at some point in time. Uh, that folks, uh, I hope you enjoyed watching us. Uh, we're glad that you did. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, if you've missed an episode, you can always catch up there. If you're confused, don't be. This is not soap. This is D and D. Let's give everybody a big wave and get the hell out of Dodge, folks. Goodbye. Thank you for watching MHI TV. This concludes our broadcast. Thank <laughs> you.